Welcome everyone. Today is August 27th. I am Mike. And I'm Brian. And this is what got our attention. So I I have to tell you, I I do have my birthday coming up this weekend. And uh, I'm actually, yeah, right. I'm actually pretty excited. I actually took off work tomorrow. And it's it's funny is like in my 20s, I was like taking off from work. I am like going to go party. I'm going to like probably spend the whole day at the pool, you know, drinking a various amount of drinks uh, and then I'm going to probably get ready and then we're probably going to go downtown uh, and probably go drink uh, at the bars and just see how many free shots I could get and things. Uh, unfortunately, that is not what I'm doing tomorrow. Uh, and this is what's funny is like as being an adult, I feel like I'm more excited now. Uh, but yeah, tomorrow I'm going to get my like my missions done. I'm going to get my tag. I'm going to take my dog to the vet. And uh, maybe pick up a few beers at the, the craft sad. brew shop kind of thing. I'm like, that's so literally what I'm sad. doing tomorrow. And But that's not even the exciting part. The exciting part is that I did something today that I didn't, so I don't have to do it tomorrow. And what that was is I cut my grass. And I know that sounds oh, super... So you live in Colorado. No. I, I li- yeah. <laughs> Different type no, of grass. No sticks and stems, right? Right, right, right. Different type of grass. But yeah, like I cut my grass today and I actually, well, I, let me back up. So my grass has been like two foot tall. There, there's... So you mowed there, the lawn. That's what most people call it. There's a story behind all this. I tried to get people to cut it, and they failed, and they just were terrible, and it just didn't happen. So eventually my grass got too long. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're leaving stuff out. I remember the old place, and you're like, you had people come and cut it, and they gave up like a third of the way in because the grass was three feet tall. Right, and that's why I have people. Your dog got <laughs> lost back there. <laughs> that's why. That's why we have people come out. But the problem is... These people like did a terrible job. Like I was so uh, just un unple- or yeah unpleased with the the work they did that uh, I actually bought a new lawnmower. So I'm super pumped about that. I have a new electric lawnmower. It has two batteries, not just one. Uh, so it runs off two batteries. So when the first one dies, the second one picks it up and it can continue cutting. Uh, I will say it cut through the whole yard on one charge, and that's exciting because I was able to cut all of the grass today, or actually between yesterday and today. And uh, it's been great. So tomorrow I have a day off that I can go do all my adult so things. And that's super self-propelled exciting. Self-propelled or you or just you push it? Just me push it. But it's uh, it. I mean, I don't have like a whole lot of grass really to cut. And, I, and it's not like it's a hill or anything. Uh, so I don't have to like worry about something like that. But I mean, I mean, yeah, I could have, you know, easily. So do, do you got any patches where like, you know, occasionally some grass is longer than the other because it's not spinning oh, yeah. fast enough or. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's uh, like a hair bugging me. Um, there's so, a yeah, because I, I've I've got an electric mower too. Uh, I've had mine uh, most of this most of this season actually, um, mostly because my I started the season and I think I mowed once on the gas one, and then I went to try to pull it the next time I needed to mow. I don't miss and that at all. Couldn't even pull the pull cord, and yeah. it was just completely seized. And I was like, you know, I can have somebody look at this. Or I could look into one of those electric ones. And uh, I went and got an electric one. Mine's literally battery run because yours runs off batteries, but you told me you plug it in. Well, no, this one actually is a charger. Like I take the batteries out and I charge them now. Oh, so you do have batteries to take out. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do, do you have to switch the batteries or do they automatically take it? So I'm trying to do like a little experiment on this thing. Cause it doesn't really tell, it tells you in the, the highlights that, you know, when the first battery dies, the second one the picks highlights. up. Like but, the bullet points. Yeah, but like in the actual video, it doesn't, or in the actual manual, it doesn't actually show you or tell you how that works. So I'm like, <laughs> so I, today I had like one battery charge. So I put that one in and used it, see how long it worked. And then I put the second one in and it seemed like a little less because it was like a smaller battery. But I'm like, I don't know. Is this, is this actually switching over? Like, I don't even know, but I'm, I'm doing my own little experiment at home. Uh, the other, the other thing though, that's good about all of this is I'm getting all this stuff done early. Right. Cause I did take nice. off tomorrow and I don't want to just be like doing all my adult things all day. Right. Uh, I do have planned tomorrow night to play some rocket league with some friends and, and my brother nice. as well. So we're going to play like a rocket league. I don't know if we're going to do a tournament or not, but, uh, that'll be something that, you know, we'll be getting able to get together, play and have a good time. Uh, and I guess at that moment, I guess I could talk about what I played this week as well. I uh, actually, I've been playing a few things, uh, since, 
our game of Wait. the m- what you gotta pause there buddy happy birthday happy early birthday oh well thanks <laughs> i appreciate that i uh so i'll just like i'm a train going down the track i am a train i'm just gonna run down all these subjects right in a row right in a row <laughs> full speed ahead <laughs> No, the uh, so I played a couple things this week, uh, and I thought were kind of interesting. So I, I tried the hype. Uh, we'll talk kind of about it a little bit later. I, I played Microsoft Sim- Flight Simulator. Uh, apparently, I'm, I'm not a pilot. Uh, apparently, I suck at flying. Uh, I couldn't even get to a crash animation. I don't know if that's a, just a thing they took out of the game, but basically, oh I, yeah, they I've, totally took that out. Oh okay, I figured so because I'm like they I would be flying. Oh, I'm sure they they just I'd be flying and it says like oh you crashed and I'm like I didn't do anything like I'm just flying. I don't know. I don't know what I did. No, so. put it on easy. Well, I don't know what you're, I put it on. You're missing out. jumped in. So. <laughs> you're missing out. You got to put it on easy because when you crash, you bounce around. It's it's like it's like you're three again oh and you God. took a plane and just threw it at the couch and it bounces around. This is what happens when you put it on easy. It's amazing. Yeah, that's totally different than what I did. So I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah. The uh, other things okay, I played... So- did you fly around like, like? Did you fly around in the state you live in? Yeah. Or? Well, I tried to fly from Atlanta to Savannah because I only had like thirty minutes at lunch today to play, and I couldn't even get like literally out of Atlanta Airport before I was crashed already. So it's it was kind of just like pointless. But I'm sure I'll okay. go back to it. So, but it's you know, I, I think I did a little better than you. Uh, uh, mostly because I knew to set like the flight mode onto easy to begin with and I used a controller. So I don't know if you're using your South paw arrow stuff or not. No, I definitely uh, used a controller. Nothing wrong with that. Oh okay, yeah. That'd be the way to go. Uh, it, it, flight sticks. Well, I don't like, have those. Like, no, hold on. Hold on. Well, like hashtag Rona economy. We got like webcams are selling out because people are working at home and like, you know, all these like shortage, you know, toilet paper shortage back at the beginning well, of the stuff. Well, you have to have that, like, right? Right. And, and like people were like first shocked that toilet paper's sh- sh- selling out. But then at the same time, we're at home more now and it's actually a different toilet paper than what sold to offices. So the demand really did spike up. That's true. But no, flight sticks are selling out now because of this game. I mean, I could see that. I mean, that that's that doesn't surprise me in any way. Uh, it's just no, I, I'm not going to go out and buy a hotel's controller. I mean, there's a lot of games I would like to play with some flight sticks. Don't get me wrong. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, like there's Elite Dangerous things like that. I would love to just try, but I just got the dust on it. Yeah, it's like from 1995. <laughs> oh the uh, uh, but no, I was playing Elite Dangerous on it. The other thing I played uh, this week, uh, actually, wait, wait, I I played. Damn it. Well, I, I wanted to play something you else. Did. Slow, slow the roll on your train. <laughs> it's getting Holy a little crazy shit. today. I don't know what it is. I need to drink some more. Right? No, like, okay. Like, I know you got Coke in there, but is it the is it the wrong type of Coke or the right type of Coke? Because, like, <laughs> you're just, like, you're just Ready. jamming. I want to talk about no, the No, no, I played a little bit of Flight Simulator 2. Uh, the download. Uh, okay, so oh, we, we right. both got I it through... <laughs> Xbox Game Pass. I tried to block this. Xbox out. Game Pass only gives you access to the standard level, uh, and that is a hundred meg download. No, not or hundred gig. Yeah, hundred gig, hundred gig download, and it took, and, and they throttle the shit right. out of it. So like it was hours. It was. Uh, my wife was like, "There's loud music coming from your room. Are you doing something in there?" I'm like, "Yes." I like it's it's downloading. It's just downloading. But no, I downloaded it and took off from an airport and twice was flying towards where I live. And the second time I got a little bit closer and crashed into one of the grocery stores that is not too far from where I live. And it was it was the right brand of grocery store. Like you could like I paused it before I crashed. I was like, that's it. That that is absolutely the grocery store. I was like holy cow i mean i could not believe like i was like oh there's the starbucks there's you know there's these stores around here here's the grocery store and i was like okay th- it was it's pretty good i mean they have a feature it's like done. live live something and it's supposed to pull like all the live data so even like for like the sky the time of day and everything it's supposed to be pulling that in if you set the that weather way. the weather uh, it so that's pulls the weather People are flying, people are using this to fly into Hurricane Laura. 
Oh my goodness! Now I want to go play this the right now. The video. <laughs> Now, uh, yeah, and and Hurricane Laura, the hurricanes that are going to hit Texas in Louisiana, Louisiana are going to be massive, and my heart goes out to everybody down there. That's that's. Uh, I hope everybody stays safe, yeah, and I hope serious. that the damage is kept down to a minimum. Absolutely. Uh, at, at the same time, the real live data that's coming out of this, and I don't know if you've read too much of it. They Microsoft works with another company that basically breaks up the Earth in to 250 million little square blocks oh, that wow. have access to like the temperature and the barometer, uh, you know, pressure rating uh, and, and all this weather, you know, wind direction and, and speed and all this information. And it uses that to rebuild the weather into this game that you're playing. And people were showing videos of flying into this hurricane um, the sunset around the hurricane and the pictures, they looked like they were from the weather channel. They, they I mean, so does it I show mean, the clouds not, and everything like actually rolling in the clouds? Yeah. The clouds. Now it, now it's not like, it's not like what the clouds look like that instance for the hurricane. It's, it's taking that data. And then from there, it's kind of computing what the clouds would look like and stuff. Okay. But like people flew into the eye and stuff. People flew so high over the hurricane, the hurricane that their their wings iced up. Oh Jesus! It's mind boggling. This, the, I mean, this is a flight simulator. First one was back in 1984, I think. And I, I just, I've seen the technology progress, and I'm still like just blown away by this game. Yeah, I mean it's a simulator. Uh, it's it's meant to. I mean, people, sorry, pilots do train on this kind of thing. Anyway, next game that I've been playing, I'm way more excited about this game than than Microsoft Flight. I suck at uh, this. <laughs> the other game I, I picked up uh, actually it was in, on sale at the Steam store, and it was for fifteen or fourteen ninety nine for Game of the Year edition of Witcher Three. And I know people have been playing, and you know, obviously CD Projekt Red. How not what. How do you not have that? Oh, I know. I know. So, like, obviously, CD Projekt Red, we've been talking about Cyberpunk all the time. We've been talking about Witcher 3. I have yet to play it. I mean, I've watched, I've watched a lot of gameplay of it. I've, I've seen, you know, Netflix. I've watched The Witcher show, really into that. And it's, uh, so I finally picked it up. It was on sale enough to where I picked it up. And I can't say that I'm uh, depressed or I am upset about my purchase. I've played it probably for a few hours now. And it's just, it's so immersive. There's so much, it's really like playing a movie. Uh, it reminds me a lot of like the Metal Gear series. Like there's a lot of cinematics that just, that you're kind of just being along for the ride for. Uh, except in this, you actually get to make decisions um, that you can, you can like answer things a certain way and that potentially will come back to haunt you later or, you know, help you later, depending on what you do. Uh, so if you haven't picked up Witcher 3, it is on sale right now. I would definitely recommend to go do that. It's uh, something else I played this week, which I thought was pretty neat and finally able to get around to uh, outside of Rocket League and all the rest of the stuff. Anything else cool. you've been playing? Oh, yes. Uh, okay, so I played an interesting little game uh, called called Kill It With Fire. Hmm. And... Uh, it's just that it's that. yeah. Kill it with fire is okay. So some people don't like spiders. Nope. I think those people are kind of crazy. Spiders are great. They, they kill the other bugs. We don't like Oh no, for sure. But not like, not like all spiders. Like I'm, I'm good. I'm glad that they're over there and they're doing their thing, but like, I don't want to wake up to a spider. It's not what I want to do. I, I took Fred outside last night just because uh, he would have a better life outside. Um, Fred. My wife, Fred, yes. The spider's name is Fred. You have a spider that um, you have in your house that you've named. That's not uh, in an, all like of them. A, in a box. I don't name them. That's their name. And and my wife is, is she's, she's like, there's another spider named Fred. I'm like, what? You can't have two people with the same name? I don't understand this. <laughs> <sighs> So, uh, so I took Fred outside, like I took the last Fred outside, uh, so that they would have a better chance of, uh, you know, having a, a good meal. Uh, but no, uh, the, the video game kill it with fire is very much for, especially for those people that don't like spiders. So all of those people this who have right the, up their alley. the arachnophobia mode and all the games, they could literally just play this mm -hmm. to, to make up for. Them, oh yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> very cool. 
Well, I okay, I do not recommend somebody with arachnophobia playing this. I have played this. The little guys move fast. Oh, they God. jump. Nope. They're not afraid of jumping. And what's worse is you like you got this little spider finder. And you use the spider finder and you're like waving it around and try to figure out where they are. And it's got like, it almost looks like um, a Wi-Fi strength symbol with the little arcs above it. And the more arcs, the closer you are to a spider. And I'm like, oh, there's a spider around here somewhere. Where is he? And you have, you can pick up objects regardless of size. Like I picked up a, Boop. like what looked like a 55 inch flat, flat screen Boop. TV Boop. and I can move it around. Right. <laughs> and frequently what you're going to find is that the spider's there He's just hanging out on the other side of this object, not moving until you see him. Oh man. So you pick up the object, you spit around, all of a sudden there's a spider, it starts skidding or across, you like drop it or throw it, and you're like picking up stuff and throwing at it. Then you upgrade to like hairspray and a lighter and you like burn them and they run around burning. Wow. <laughs> you, you get a revolver, you get to shoot them. And uh, it's, it's very much like a first person shooter, but with spiders but not, not like Doom first-person shooter. It's a lot more puzzle aspect where you, know, you, you got a checklist of things you need to do to unlock the next place. Uh, one of them's like, you'll throw the book at them, and you like pick up books, you throw them <laughs> And you throw them in jail, spider. and there's a jail because you threw the book. Wrong, throw the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But uh, uh, it looks like a fun game. I've played it. Um, I personally, I don't know if it was because of that they have such smooth motion. I'm, I'm used to first person shooters. It's got like the head bob, right? Yeah. And uh, I don't know if it was that, but oh my God, after about an hour, I started getting motion sickness and I was like, okay, we're gonna, and I don't get that normally in first person shooters. Hmm. Uh, so I kind of like chilled out for for a little bit, but uh, it's, it's fun, man. Set those little guys on fire and they're running around and they're making noises and <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, actually, uh, another game I forgot to mention that we played. We actually played our game of the moment this week. Oh, yeah. We actually played Sea of Thieves. And I don't know if, if you're familiar with Sea of Thieves. It's basically a pirate game uh, that you are. It's kind of an open world. I could say open sea. Uh, there's a couple different. There's multiple islands you can go to. Uh, you can get a crew up to four people. And depending on the amount of people you have is the, the type of ship you can you can actually uh, steer or take a hold of or whatever. And uh, there's there's a campaign. There's like, you know, missions you can go do and uh, collect items like collect your booty as a pirate. And uh, and then there's also the aspect of being a pirate, the whole like. I'm going to go take from other people because like I'm a pirate and why not? And it's, it's right. a fun game. I really recommend it, especially if you have some friends you want to get on and just have a blast tonight. The, uh, one of the best games I've ever, one of the best games that I've ever seen that has the best water. Like the water seems very realistic. It looks real. It acts real. When you jump into it, it seems like you're in the ocean. Uh, also there's sharks. So be careful for the sharks, but, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely one of those games that I would definitely recommend playing. It's they've got a lot of content. Originally, it wasn't like as much content, but they've added a lot. Uh, but we had a blast with it on Game of the Moment. Uh, we were both doing RP. We were both doing our pirate voices, our, our best pirate Arr. voices we could possibly do. I'll tell you, I had a lot more fun when we actually went and got some damn treasure <laughs> instead of like, oh, here's a little ship. Let's pick on it. They don't even got any freaking treasure on there. So it's and they're kicking the shit out. And of And we couldn't even inept. beat them. Like how terrible it, it was bad. Like I was like, ugh. this is boring, guys. Let's go dig up some damn treasure. And then if we're fighting somebody off, at least we've got reason to do it. We're like, yeah, hey, those assholes aren't getting our treasure. Yeah, it was it was interesting. It was a lot of fun though. I mean, just hey, you know, lollygagging. And we got fun. a Reaper treasure, which apparently right. is really important because if you get it, everybody that's playing on the same instance that you're on, uh, you're marked on their map. Yep. So so they like start gunning for you. And and I I don't know if it was like low player count that day or what. We were uh, <laughs> it, we were really close to where we needed to go to. Don't oversell us, man. Into, we we helped. <laughs> <laughs> we were really close to where we needed to turn it in, thankfully. Uh, Cause yeah, uh, it, it was, we got a lot of gold out yeah, like there. Like 10, the average chest, 10,000. 10, yeah. The average chest, we're getting like five, six, 700, 1500. We got 10,000. Was, yeah. Oh, that was pretty fun. Uh, I also thought it was fun because it's been a year since I played it. Right. There's a ton of changes. I was talking to a skeleton pirate parrot that was trying to give me a quest. 
Um, uh, I was like, I had a crewmate that decided it would be funny to throw a bomb at me at, at, and blow me. I also got shot right up. off the ship. Yep. Also, yeah, you got you got hit by a cannon and killed. Then, and then that same person, uh, she'd put a her. She was like, "Hey, look at my cat." And you have like little like like uh, animals you can get, and she's like, "Hey, check out my cat. That's- it's a performer." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." She goes, "Watch," and she takes it and she shoves it inside a cannon and then shoots it off into space. And we're like, "Are you sure?" <laughs> she's like, "Oh yeah, she does this all the time." <laughs> we're like, "Okay." <laughs> so I mean, there's a little quirky yeah, I, things I like thought- that. I thought you were going to be the griefer and she was like the biggest griefer out of all us. Cause she was griefing us. Yeah. Yeah. She definitely was. Apparently she, she plays that game. She was, she was like, captain, often. move a little bit more to the right. right. I think there's a treasure chest there. And she like fires the cannon and kills you. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what happened. I just died. And she's like dying laughing. I'm like, Oh great. Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah. Sea of Thieves is great. If you haven't checked it out, it's on uh, Xbox game pass right now. Um, it's probably going to be there for, eh, it's been there for a while. I would think it's probably stay there for a little bit, but if not, it's just, you can pick it up on steam or wherever else you, you buy games. Uh, so definitely recommend uh, it. It's definitely yeah. a fun friend game uh, or by yourself. It's just a lot tougher by yourself. Cause it's just you. So. Yeah. But I hear two people in the sloop is pretty awesome. Yeah. Well. Two people is not I, bad. Like, incredible. Cause it's well balanced against the four person shifts since it's more maneuverable and faster. Uh, so, yeah, that's actually, a, it's, that's a good point. It's pretty epic. Well, that's a good point. There, there are no skills or proficiency proficiencies you get as a player. Right. So it's really just, it doesn't matter how long you've been playing the game. Everything in the game only levels up your cosmetics. So nothing is going to make you better, have a better ability or a quicker fire than someone else. Like they all have the same weapons, the same ability as the ships. It's just like what you look like or what your ship looks like. So other than that, there's no performance changes, which is, is pretty nice in right. a game like this, especially coming in with people who've been playing for you know years. So anyway, so for any, epic news, you have anything else for what you played or is that it? No, that was it. Cool. All right. So going on for epic news. Um, so getting back to talking about like epic uh, games uh, and Apple, where they had filed suit about Fortnite and they started the hashtag free Fortnite and they started all that the fun. hashtag. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, where they had started the, you know, that, that, uh, you know, <laughs> Try, trying to, like I said, weaponize their 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 fans. Right. Uh, and and then Apple's like, well, hey, guess what? Since you broke your terms of service, we're going to like turn off your ability to even develop anything on the iOS platform. Uh, that that was, you know, where we left it last time. And oh, my God, since then, it has been popping off left and right. It's like every day uh, there's a new article not- about this. Not not just articles, but like updates on the lawsuits. It's like the people that are involved in these lawsuits are not wasting any time whatsoever. Microsoft jumped in and they actually kind of declared support in favor of Epic Games. Not not for the Fortnite part. And we already said they have their own problems with the iOS store where, you know, they're (laughs) they got their own thing with, uh, you know, the the game cloud. Uh, the Xbox Game Cloud offering that they're trying to have over there, uh, which they've always already had problems with Google and Android as well. It's only completely uh, set up on Samsung. But uh, they actually provided support in the fact that Apple is going to take away their dev tools. And that's when Microsoft kind of sat up and, you know, kind of weighed in this and basically said, hey, you know, Apple interfering with Unreal Engine could hurt creators, right. not just Epic, but that if this gets set as precedence, that that can end up hurting other creators down the road. So that keeps people from not just not just playing Epic's games, but playing everyone's games. Because if the Unreal Engine developer tools go away, that may even affect other people creating games right. on the Unreal Engine as well. Which is one of so the, the free open source plat- uh, developing tools that a lot of people use, along with like Unity, uh, which is more yeah. lighter than Unreal. Yeah, and 
Unreal has been really cool about it because they're initially free, like you said, uh, and then they have a really good licensing program of like, oh, once you get up to a certain size, then, you know, there'll be some licensing fees. Right. But until then, don't worry about it. You know, establish yourself first. And Epic Games has been able to do that partially because of the popularity of Fortnite. Uh, there, there was a time before Fortnite where it was questionable whether the unreal engine was going to stick around and they were you know they they were rebooting unreal tournament yeah. <laughs> in fact Where it came from and, so. and that has kind of like petered off to yeah. nothing i mean they, they kind of did all their developers to go to fortnite well they did it but it's it to me it still wasn't as it didn't like have give me that same warm feeling i did as back in the past they kind of they added the new play gameplay elements like the arcade style yeah. where you got you know perks and stuff i just i wasn't a part of that i'd rather just give me a redeemer and i'll just go blow somebody up <laughs> and it never really made it out of it never really made it out of alpha yeah so now the nice thing is and apparently a judge agreed on uh, agreed to this uh, agreed to the same thing that microsoft's saying in general, uh, in the suit, basically, the judge has already ruled Apple can't turn off their access to the dev tools. He's, he's not talking about Fortnite. He's not saying, oh, Fortnite can do whatever the heck it wants. On He's just, he's just saying, listen, I get your terms of service, but you can't turn this off. Right. So that's kind of been a win already on that side. So that was really interesting to see that happen. And then, and then Epic just keeps going and poking the bear. <laughs> it seems like this whole story keeps, has like, been that. Like, it's just them been poking the bear or multiple bears or whatever. Like, it's just, I don't know. This is right, all getting out of hand. And, it, it, you know, I've said before that, that this guy, um, it's Tim Sweeney. I think I said Todd Sweeney last week. I think it's Tim Sweeney. Uh, has you know tried to pick fights in the past with like Microsoft and their store built into the Windows, uh, and I don't know how much of it is that. I mean, certainly they've been a proponent of like reducing the cost that is charged to developers for the platforms that are you know presenting their games out. Right. You know, they've picked a fight with Steam in the past. Yep. Steam does the standard thirty percent. That's where kind of Steam's kind of where the thirty percent came from. And the, the you know, cut off the top and the developers get the rest. And, you know, Fortnite blew up and Epic says, hey, we're going to start our own game store and we're going to do like 15 percent or 10 percent or something like that. So they keep poking the bear. They started a hashtag free Fortnite Cup tournament, which actually includes some anti Apple rewards. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so. Th- the um, well, that's lovely. <laughs> that's so the uh, some of the gaming hardware prizes include uh, an Alienware gaming laptop. Well, that's not bad. Uh, yeah, Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 tablet. You know, one plus eight smartphone. That's, uh, PlayStation Four Pro. Yeah, these aren't bad. I mean, the thing is, with oh, they're great prizes. Like they're with just Epic, decidedly anti Apple for a reason. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like with Epic, they've always poked the bear. And I mean, the thing is, mm-hmm. if they didn't, we would probably still be under like this almost like Steam monopoly, right? Like if it wasn't for the fact right. that. You know, because they're not the only company who kind of split off and just said, you know, I want to have my own launcher now, too. But they were one of the big ones. And that was one of the ones that we did, you know, did see like full coverage on because of Fortnite and other games that they were kind of you know, getting those relationships with. And uh, I think it's even uh, like it was a Rocket League, right? That's going to, to Epic as well um, when they when they get free to play here soon. Uh, so they've been making big announcements and big uh, contracts with companies or gaming studios and stuff to bring their games over to the platform because, I mean, like you said, they, they get a better cut. It makes more sense for them. Uh, so why not? Right. But, I mean, and, some fights you just don't uh, Steam, <laughs> Steam even, like, reduced some of the cut that they were taking because of this, too. Uh, they they said, hey, once you get above a certain level, you know, we'll reduce the cut. Now, that doesn't help the indies. Yeah. It, it was funny because it only helped the big game companies right the ones they want to keep 
But uh, yeah, they, that was one thing that they kind of worked on too was uh, changing that up. They they actually caused Steam to make some changes. Yeah. So it's good to shake it up. Every once we will see where this goes. It's it's very interesting. Uh, moving on to some interesting things. Uh, both of you and I have played Fall Guy. Yeah, it was and fun. It's still not an esport. It's it's getting it. It's getting there. We'll work on it. <laughs> it's getting there. It's getting there. It's getting big. That is for sure. Uh, and speaking of big, uh, most people look at the you know the the Fall Guys and they're like, oh, they're you know, like their thumb size. Yeah, they're like jelly like, beans. Compares right? them to little thumbs. They're like jelly beans. They're small. Uh, you know, there's there's been say artwork out there that people have like compared it to the size of like say Kratos or something maybe. They're so cute. And they, yeah, they're so cute and tiny. And you know, they sent this out and then the developers saw some of this stuff and said, uh, wait a minute. That's not, that's not at all the size of these things. Uh, they are definitely bigger than that. And people are like, huh? And they said, yeah, no, canonically, that's not their size. They said, no, the fall guys are six feet tall. What? Six feet tall? Now, I don't know if you've seen a fall guy. They're pretty wide around. Oh, my goodness. So six foot tall means that they're huge. That's like wearing somebody wearing like a Pikachu like suit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like for cosplay or something. Right. And so, yeah, uh, I don't, to me, they're kind I get on the stage and there's, there's those fruit coming down and it's uh, oranges just knock me over. And as far as I'm concerned, they're an inch tall. Would, if they're six foot tall, <laughs> how big are those fruits? There's fruit out there. <laughs> there's fruit out there that could like, I don't know, feed a starving country for months. True. Uh, as long as the fruit stays good. Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know about that size thing. That's that's kind of crazy. <laughs> that is pretty wild. Okay, so I uh, want to move on from that. We're going to move on to Zeissia's favorite section. Hold up. Hold up. One thing to note, though, uh, they have actually, PlayStation announced that Fall oh, Guys yeah, that's right. is literally the most Speaking downloaded big, game that PlayStation Plus has ever had. And I think before that was, I think, Rocket League. So it, just like we had said, if that was going to happen, it happened. And now it is literally it did. the most downloaded game. And uh, I think it's still on that PlayStation Plus. True. Yeah. On PlayStation Plus, I that think got it's posted. free, obviously. And then uh, I think That Steam got posted by bucks. PlayStation yesterday. Right. Or no, excuse me, day before yesterday, 26th. Yeah, it's I think it's 20 that, bucks in uh, Steam. It's uh, I've, I haven't personally had a lot of issues with it. Um, I've got some other friends that have been playing it and they've been mentioning that like they've been at the end, like they're in the finals. They finally make it there and the game just like network crashes. Like they're like, oh, server disconnect. And to me, that would suck. But I, I've, I haven't been in that position, but that, I know that's out there. So the, they're definitely working on it. They're obviously they've got a lot of you know attention on it. A lot of people playing. So take that for what you know, if you're into it, if you're not into it, that's basically it. Oh, no. Well, that might come back in a second. Oh, okay. You are here. You're fine. You're fine. You keep going. Well, anyway, because, I think you were uh, saying. Next up is, yeah, Zeissia's favorite moment, the Cyberpunk 2077 update of the week. Yep. And as always, Cyberpunk 2077 is uh, still a thing that we're all looking forward to. I think this is during our COVID uh, coronavirus uh, only thing we can really look for coming up in our future, hopefully, hopefully that uh, CD Projekt Red will do us all well. And uh, we've mentioned in the past that, you know, they, they definitely mentioned that, you know, this game is going to be something uh, like an RPG all on side of just like Witcher 3. Like if not more in like involved as an RPG than than Witcher 3, which a lot of people are confused because they're looking at the game thing. It's more of an, a first person shooter, but they're they're really saying it's not. You know, it's really it's going to be something that it's, it's going to be just an RPG first and then obviously with elements of FPS. The uh, so somebody on Twitter actually added 
CD Projekt Red, and they were at Cyberpunk, the game, and said, uh, will the game have free DLC like your big brother at Witcher game? And uh, the only thing that Cyberpunk responded with was a GIF. And if you're familiar with the Kool-Aid Man, it's uh, it's basically a gif of the Kool-Aid Man smashing through the wall going, oh yeah. So that's literally what they're saying. Uh, the game will have free DLC. I'm sure there's going to be some other options that you can get later. Uh, but the game will come with free DLC, which is a good thing to hear, especially with a lot of games at launch. And then it's like, it seems like almost like a month later, you're already having to pay for like, you know, a new a new thing. Like I know with, um, I think it was... Uh, what game was it? Destiny 2, I think. Because when I bought that originally, we played it for like a month. And then it was like, all right, all right, here's the new DLC. And it was like, okay, well, that sucks. Like, I don't want to have to pay to continue playing. I just paid for the game. So, uh, so we'll have that. So that's good. Uh, and that's our Cyberpunk update of the week. Nice. Very good to hear. Uh, so a lot of things happened this last week that were kind of interesting uh, some very big events. Uh, yep. you know, we talked about how there's been some big events going on to kind of take the place. The fact that E3 disappeared. Right. And one of them was the DC fan dome. It was quite often talked about quite often shown out there, uh, where it was just getting together and talking about all things DC for many, many days and going through all the different things between things like, hey, we've got like new movies coming out, Suicide Squad 2. We've got new TV shows coming out that was like covered. And they actually covered two games that will be coming out that, I mean, I have some definite interest interest in. Yes. Uh, and... One of them is Suicide Squad, Kill Justice League. That looked really good. That looked pretty good. And that looks like... So the trouble is, is they didn't really go into too much uh, as far as gameplay went. Oh, right. So it was definitely it was really hard cinematic. to see. Yeah. Yeah, it was all cinematic. And, and that makes sense because this game is not supposed to be released necessarily until 2022. Right. So that that's a ways off. And that's made by Rocksteady, so, I believe, right? Yeah, that's the, that's made by Rocksteady. That is correct. And they have, you know, a couple of characters that we're familiar with, with, you know, you got... Deadshot's are going to be in there. Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang. They're bringing Kill Shark in, and some of the some of the cinematics they showed to Kill Shark was stellar. Yeah, him just picking somebody up and just literally just eating them was amazing. But again, it's cinematic, so we're yeah. going to have to wait a little bit closer to release to see what is going to be the gameplay here. Now the story looks like it's going to be great because. It starts off with like Metropolis being invaded. You see this giant skull ship with like these like squid tentacles. Um, those that are familiar with the comic may know that that is Brainiac's ship. And Brainiac's has, he has a lot of telepathic powers. Uh, if you watch the trailer, which again is mostly cinematics, but really cool cinematics, yeah. uh, you will see that they're going to fight up against an evil Superman. And, and a lot of people were thinking, oh, yeah, people were like, oh, it's going to be Bizarro Superman and stuff like that. But with Brainiac involved, it could be that Brainiac is telepathically dominating Superman here. Hence the name of the g game being Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Yeah. And it's I mean, that was like the highlight of obviously of the video is they finally get to the enemy and he comes up from behind the building or comes up rising up from the building. And he's got like this guy in his hand. And he's got like these red eyes and he's like looking at the, or looking at the suicide squad and he like just kills the guy, like just smash. And you're like, what? Vap and it's like, vaporizes whoa, him. like what's going on? He with turns him to like, ash. That is crazy. I love it. Cause Captain Boomerang didn't, he got knocked away. So he didn't know what coming. He comes back. He's like, so do we figure out who we're supposed to kill? And all three of them just like raise their fingers and point to Superman. And, and Captain Boomerang looks up and goes, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> 
so it definitely uh, it's, looks it's amazing. good i mean but we obviously like you said we didn't see any gameplay i mean who knows you know i mean it, it hyped me yeah, up for now, sure it's a hype video now the nice thing is rocksteady has done games right. in the batman universe exactly. before so it's not like it's not like they're gonna be very new at this they're they're gonna like bring some experience to this and they're gonna bring some heft to this in fact this is actually a continuation of the Arkhamverse. This is in the same universe that, you know, the Arkham Asylum games were in. Right, for Batman, yeah. Yeah, and so they're going to continue kind of in that universe. They've made a couple of changes. There's been some people complaining that they, like, changed Deadshot, uh, whatever. I mean, <laughs> like. A, that's up to the artists. Yeah, and, and B, and B, we just we had a su- we had a Suicide Squad movie uh, where Deadshot was you know played by Will Smith. We got the new one that uh, you know what Idris El- Elba is I think playing him. So yeah, I mean they're gonna take advantage of that and they're gonna make Deadshot you know kind of similar visually to them and that makes sense. Now that was one of the games. Uh, the other game. That will be coming out in 2021 to Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, PC. No news on backwards compatibility. But again, 2021, I'm not super concerned about that. Although it'd be nice if they did it. uh, Is going to be the much rumored and finally confirmed Gotham Knights. Which also looks really good. Looks. Now this one, they have seven minutes of gameplay out there. You should go check it out. It's amazing. It is. The concept is Batman's dead. He's died. Right. And that's how it starts. That's how the game starts. Now, again, it's a comic book. Oh, we've seen Superman die in the past, too. What's your point? And he come right. back. Uh, but anyway, at least at least the the start here is that Batman dies. And when he dies, an automatic message goes out to some of the people that he works with, like, you know, Batgirl and Robin and a couple other people and basically says, I'm dead. And I destroyed the bat cave, uh, you know, automatically just to make sure it didn't fall into the wrong hands. Uh, I had the Belfry's out there though. And that's good for you to use. It's got all the information you're good to use. No one knows about that. And go continue to protect Batman or protect Gotham city. <laughs> And uh, so Red Hood and Nightwing are the other two that join you as well. So at least those four, right. it looks like it's going to have some two-person co-op. So I smell a game of the moment coming up sometime next year. Oh, yeah, for Who sure. Who knows? Another thing to mention and on the Suicide brings- Squad, though, is it's four people as well, at least from the show from the, the cinematic. So uh, that's right. another game that we're potentially going to have, like, four characters to pick from, maybe co-op. Yeah, it'd be really nice to have some co-op in that. Uh, the other good thing about Gotham Knights is that it brings back a villain or set of villains from the comic books that people have been really excited to see in some form of media because they really haven't seen them in the movies. They really haven't seen them in games. And that is the Court of Owls. And that is this whole group of people that is working against Batman and Batman's you know allies. So there's a lot of things in here that are going to be pretty exciting. Uh, And we're going to see some of the villains that uh, are more mainstream and more familiar. The gameplay itself shows that, uh, you know, they're fighting against Dr. Freeze. Uh, Speaking of the gameplay, finishing up this really quick. (laughs) The gameplay looks, uh, they they got it out there. They got 4K video out there. So you can see it in all its glory if you want to. It looks sick. It looks like third person perspective action game not not gears of war much faster action more of the arkham knight style uh where you're doing batman type combat but i also saw numbers popping off people so i think there's i think there's gonna be a little bit of rpg in this too where you're able to like level up abilities or level up weapons we're gonna have to see when it comes out obviously but uh i don't know i'm pretty excited about what this might be coming next year. Yeah, for both of these games, I'm pretty excited about. I'd like to play. I really enjoyed the Batman series. Those were, um, like, it was just a, a better take, I felt like, on some of the, like, as a Batman game, 
and uh, those were super exciting. A lot of like puzzles along with like the fighting. The fighting was always fun. It was like you really felt like you were Batman when you're doing the combat. So seeing that they're going to place these in this world, we'll see. Yeah. Like the other characters, like they'll have their own abilities and things, which will be really nice to see as well. Yeah, there's there's reasons why that combat has been copied yeah. by other games is because it works so well. Yep. Uh, speaking about gameplay, or at least the experience of gameplay being copied. <laughs> uh, so we played Among Us, uh, not last week, or not this week, but last week for our game of the moment. And if, uh, if you missed that, what it is, is basically it's a social deception game, style game, uh, but it's a an actual video game you can play. And you can buy it from the, the Steam store for $5, or you can actually download it on your phone for free, and then you can pay, I think, a couple bucks to remove the ads or buy some cosmetics to help out the developers. Uh, but the whole idea is basically you are trapped on a ship with uh, a group of people, whoever, up to, I think, 10 people you can play, the minimum is four. And what happens is, is there is an imposter someone that's actually out to sabotage the mission and to basically kill all of you, uh, the people who aren't infected. So that type of game, uh, it was actually really interesting. We played it. There's, it's on the Twitch. You can go back and watch the video if you'd like. But uh, it's actually taken off on Twitch as well, which... Uh, doesn't really surprise me, but what's interesting about it is because it is a social game, and typically you only get like one streamer playing, maybe with a friend or two. Uh, but this is really a game about talking, and then and the the idea is the the game is kind of taken off on Twitch because you have a group of streamers who are working together, they're playing together, and they're also trying to you know manipulate each other and also you know kill the other players and such. So. It's um it's pretty neat and uh, what all the thing the part that their people are doing is that they're starting to include their audience like the viewers into this process too. So while they're streaming, they're like, you know, what should I do? Like, should I should I vote for him or should I not? And they're just, like asking the viewers, and the viewers are responding, or you know, at the same time, like if the other imposter, like, should I kill this person or who should I kill? And making a kind of a game out of it. And uh, it's it's one of those things that uh, as we saw, like playing it, you can kind of evolve your own rules like there's a basic rule set that you can play by and you can adjust some of the settings and then in our case we kind of moved it into like well if we die we're just not going to talk so that way it seems more real it's like you know phoenix are you there phoenix phoenix and it's like he's gone he just disappears well and we'll see and, and that was kind of that happened so naturally we just we, no one made a rule of it i mean we eventually did kind of say it out loud but it happened so naturally where when someone killed you, you immediately stopped talking. And we were all in Discord, so we easily could have said, oh yeah, Jesus just killed me or, or anything like that. Um, I say that because one of the players was named Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> but we could have just said that and totally just ruined the game that way. But everybody really was into how the game was going on that if you got killed, you just immediately stopped talking. And just organically happened because the game really isn't made for you to be talking on discord because right. you can kind of give away a whole bunch of stuff on who's doing what. And we found that just by incorporating a couple of things like that into our discord chat, that it actually became pretty fair. I, like it was difficult for the imposter, but it wasn't impossible and it was still difficult for the crew members to do their stuff too. We literally had a game and I think we mentioned this last week, but we literally had a game that it just got quieter and quieter and quieter. And there was just one person talking along and they literally <laughs> said, Hey, wait a minute. Where is, where is everybody? I haven't heard anybody for a while. And then all of a sudden it said imposter wins because yep. the last person got like killed by them. And it was just, it, made the game really fun. So I can understand why this is kind of picking up some steam as it were on the Twitch verse, because yeah, it's, it's a social game and, you know, doing things like allowing your chat to like democratically decide who you're going to vote off and stuff, allow the trolls to kind of like take yeah. advantage of that. If they want to steer you the wrong way, because they all think it's hilarious to do that. I mean, totally could see that stuff happening. Uh, yeah, this is... It, we had fun with it, and I'm sure we'll have fun with it again, so... Yeah, I mean... Makes sense. The thing is, too, this isn't a new concept, right? So if you're familiar with... 
you know, the deception, the social deception style games, then there's all there. If, and if you, or if you have it and you like this kind of thing, there's other games you can actually do this kind of style of gameplay in. And uh, most of these are tabletop. Uh, I will, I'm going to name off a few, uh, but there's a game called Dead of Winter, uh, which is one of those. It's a board style game, a board game, and uh, you can have up to six people play with you. And there's, uh, they consider one's a traitor. And the idea is like in the post-apocalyptic, like there's zombies and you're basically starving to death with your little crew of people like in a, a bunker somewhere and each turn you have to set you know you have to pick a group of people to go out into the like the wild and go to the gas station to get gas to run the generators or get food for everybody to survive and while you're out there's people yeah. out there that you can pick up as like npcs essentially uh that you can that you still and have the, to feed but yeah and the trader can sabotage things right out of all the games you're going to mention i think this one is probably closest to this video game yeah well, there's another one too, uh, but basically a trader can go in and throw even junk like into the pile, but nobody knows who threw in what. So when you guys are like, all right, mission's accomplished. Let's see what we got. You need three gas and you open up one, two, and then the third one's just a pile of trash. And you're like, great, we've now lost the mission and we don't have gas for our generator. So now we're even like, it's just, so those games are out there. Another one, it's very similar to that is Outpost 31. If you're a, a, a the movie, like the thing, if you're a fan of that, there's Outpost 31. Mm-hmm. It's the same style scenario, except they have the monsters included. So the, the actual thing is a part of this. And same thing, you have a group of people that go out and then it's, you know, if you're familiar with the movie, you have to do a blood test. And each round, like that's how you try to determine like who's actually infected. And uh, you actually, you can go all the way to the end as infected and actually get on the helicopter and fly away. And if you're infected and you do that, you win the game still because you've literally spread the infection out. So there's games like that on the lighter side, on the opposite side is uh, there's a game called Salem and Salem's a card game. And it's basically same thing there. It's a group of witches. So you have your you have people who are the like the villagers and you have people who are witches and um, your cards in front of you kind of tell you who they are. You don't reveal those to people. Uh, but as the turns go around, you basically throw cards to accuse people of being a witch. So I can throw so many cards mm-hmm. on you know Phoenix and be like, you're the witch. And then if you get to seven, then you have to reveal you have to reveal your card and then you but he can pick which card he wants to reveal. So after all of those cards are revealed, uh, either he dies and he's not the witch, or if he does, then we reveal the witch. Uh, so there's different games like that. Uh, and then those I, are like, like, I'm telling you, uh, I love it when, you know, people are arguing back and forth in among us, uh, you know, oh, he's, he's the imposter. He's a part blah, 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 blah. And then we finally vote. And the guy is just like, you know, you're like, ah, you know, I told you I wasn't the imposter. Yeah. You guys just, you guys done effed up yep. and you see him floating out. And it says, was not the imposter. And you're like, oh, flip the table. I was so convinced. <laughs> I thought I had good evidence. Right. Why? So there's a couple other games and uh, Resistance is another one. You can check that one out. I don't really know too much about that one, but I know it is one of these types of games. Uh, the other one I'm going to mention is Werewolf. And it's a social deception game. You don't even need a board game. You don't need anything to play it. All you need is a, a copy of the rules, uh, which you can find online. And uh, there's different... Uh, like flavors to it as, as well. And, but there, you just need a person who needs to be the moderator and one person basically controls the game and you pick a group of people and then, you know, you go through and you assign people certain roles and you basically do the same thing. You have a, a night phase or a, a town meeting phase where everybody's talking and you're trying to determine who's the werewolf and who's not. And you know, people are making up a story. I'm just the farmer who's been farming their lawn. all. You know, I mean, their corn all day <laughs> or whatever. And, uh, and then there's a voting phase and you have to vote, but then, Every night, the werewolf's going to kill somebody. So uh, definitely yeah, games you can of, check out, and it's out free. Of, out of all of those games, I would say werewolf, uh, even even the more complex versions of werewolf, out of all those games, I think werewolf is the simplest of them. And and not to say that as a bad way. I mean, sometimes when you got a group of people, especially ones that are not familiar with you know this type of game, you want the simple one. You want the one you can quickly just get started and get people talking and, yep. and get people engaged. And uh, it's got its place. It is, it, it's still one of the best because of how it keeps it simple. Even when it adds in some of the complexities like the seer and like, I think the little girl and like yeah. all, all the different things that you can add in there still makes it real simple for people to figure out. And it just keeps to the basic premise werewolf bad figure out who's the werewolf 
Get rid of them. I've played I've played up to like forty people in a group setting for Werewolf. If uh, how exactly we have a really good moderator. So if you're if you're listening it's to the just podcast, like ten hour long games. Oh, it's long. If you're listening to the podcast and you're in the Atlanta area, uh, the Atlanta Reddit they do uh, a meetup every year. Uh, obviously, this year that didn't happen, uh, but usually every year they do one. And there's a guy there who does. Uh, he moderates it, and he's I think he's like the one who kind of runs it. But he basically, I mean, he'll just say, "All right, who wants to play?" And then everybody's there because he's really good at it. And there's like forty people, and we're all just like, "How many werewolves?" Uh, I don't know exactly. He I, he would have to tell you. I don't know. There's there's, there's many. Got to so, be at least seven. I think there's like six or seven. That sounds about right. But I mean, even with that group setting, it is still really really fun because it's just you have a bunch of people who don't know each other. So then it's even more random. Like you're like, well, are they lying or are they not? Because I don't know this person. It's not like I can go, oh, I know when he lies. Like no, you don't know these people. So, and then trying to get there's the crowd gotta to be sway. enough. There's got to be enough other things going on at the time because that's that is the one detriment to Werewolf um, it, it, or any of these games, really. Yeah. Is that uh, when you get eliminated, you're sitting there, you're just like yeah. waiting for the rest of the game. And then when you're like, you're the first you. one out out of 40 person Werewolf, you've got like three hours. You can <laughs> watch like, uh, like, a Stanley Cooper film or something. I don't know. Like, well, there's, there's definitely at the Reddit meetup. There's a lot of other things going on. People bring board games. There's, so there's, there's other things you can do, drink, eat, whatever. There's a barbecue going, uh, but that's just one of the settings that we typically play in. And, that, and that's one of the larger settings. But uh, so like, that could get deadly. If you did a shot every time that somebody like voted out the wrong person to werewolf on 40 person werewolf, that'd be crazy. Actually, I've, we've played with also two different uh, teams of werewolves. So we've had like, a team and B team werewolves and they're all trying to, to win. So like, it's, it's, it's a crazy, I mean, it's, there's so many mods you can do to it. Uh, but if you're into yeah, among no, us, crazy. check it out on Twitch. You can, you can watch people playing it. Obviously now you can check our, our stream from game of the moment. Uh, and then all these other games are found uh, at your local bookstore or card game store, wherever you, you buy your games from, uh, your of, friendly local game yeah. store or your friendly local comic book store. Yep. Uh, dead of winter. Actually, you can probably pick up a target or even like, some places like that. I know I've seen them, uh, but Dead of Winter they do a uh, shop local. Yeah, Will Wheaton does a uh, the game series where he reviews games, and that's one of the games he's done. Yeah. So you can look it up on there. Uh, he's got a nice like setup of like how the game works, and then also them playing it. So uh, anyway, that's my my werewolf uh, love uh, spread to you guys along with Among Us. Uh, definitely gonna keep playing that because it's obviously awesome. But uh, so with that being said, we're gonna take a moment for our uh, weekly sponsors. And we're back. So the first short we got today is uh, I don't know if if you're from uh, if you've lived through the ninth the early or the late 1990s uh, early 2000s. Uh, there was a company called Napster, and if uh, you're a Metallica fan, you may know a little bit about it. If you were just a, a person on the web that wanted to download music uh, legally at the time, uh, whether it was illegal or not, we didn't really know. It was kind of like a gray area. Uh, but Napster was one of those big uh, clients you would use to, to download uh, P2P, person to person, from their library, basically. Whatever they had, you could just download it. Uh, so I know they haven't been in the news very often because it's been a long time. Uh, but actually, this is a headline that just got dropped uh, on the 25th, so earlier this week. And basically, uh, a company called Melody VR just bought Napster for $70 million. And that's including 44 of that million uh, owed to record labels and other partners. So I'm reading a Music okay, Business so, Worldwide article. Okay, the 40 million owed to other people makes more sense now. I, in a million years, would never have thought that Napster's were $70 million. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> there, well, there are legit people on the internet today that have no clue what Napster is. Yeah. And you got to say your 1990s or, you know, because you know, you've been wanting to say the 1900s since last week. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, apparently. And, <laughs> and, but, what? $70 million? Well, Who? according to uh, the SEC filing from Napster's previous majority owner, this is from the article, uh, Real Networks, it's comprised of $15 million in cash, $11 million in Melody uh, VR stock, and assumption by a Melody VR of approximately forty-four million in payment obligations, primarily to various music industry entities. Which makes sense. 
Yeah. And it kills me that you even said it was real media. If anyone doesn't know who real media is, don't feel bad. <laughs> Boy, you had to be in the 90s to know what that meant, too. So Holy the cow. so the thing is, you're thinking like Napster and VR, like what what is going on here? Right. Like, I don't know how that could really make sense. Uh, but here's a quote from uh, the, the CEO of Melody VR, Anthony Machete. Uh, or match it. It says, Melody VR's acquisition of Napster will result in the development of the first ever music entertainment platform which combines immersive visual content and music streaming. For music fans today, live and recorded music are intrinsically linked. Uh, we are seeing, uh, we are as keen to see our favorite artists perform live as we are to listen to their albums. So in that sense, it seems like they're going to try to take on the live perspective, like, you know, being able to put the VR, you know, uh, headset on and then watch a live concert, especially right now where we have none of that, as we were saying before. Which you've talked. Well, not none of it. You've you've attended one yourself, which I think is amazing. Well, like not VR, but just like on the Internet. So having that ability to, to, to really like get immersed into that kind of like scenario would be great. Uh, it'd be even better if you could like see your friend next to you as you like look. Yeah, that's uh, uh, that's a little more on the Ready Player One level, but yeah. <laughs> I just it's it's weird that they needed v- that they needed Napster to do that. Uh, you would think they. What I don't understand here is excuse me. How does Napster have the name recognition that they? Because that's the only thing I can think of them purchasing it for. The concept of doing you know concerts online and VR concerts online. I mean. Lots of companies have, in theory, thought of that. I mean, like you've, again, attended this one yourself. The only, how do they need Napster to do that? Well, I think it's, it's, uh, what they say in this article too, is like, it's because they're also delivering over 90 million licensed tracks. So they already have, because of all the movement with Metallica having to pay for all the royalties and such, they actually do have licensing uh, now that they're offering. It's not just, you know, the name, but that is what they're buying. So. Oh, that makes more sense then. Okay, yeah. so if the, li- if the licensing's there, which makes it easier for them to put on a concert, exactly, virtual or otherwise. Okay, I get it now. <laughs> it's still crazy. They're still around. <laughs> okay, so uh, bringing up Halo, which is still around but delayed, <laughs> delayed till next year. Well, we thought it was delayed till next year, and then the rumors started hitting, and we talked about people dropping rumors last week. And, you know, sometimes you have some people that, you know, give you a little bit more veracity to these rumors than other people. And there were some, again, people in theory, talking to developers, talking to the people to know, came up with these rumors that like Halo Infinite was going to drop completely any support for the Xbox One, which then goes back against with what a lot of Microsoft has been saying of like, Hey, we want to like, make sure that you have the ability to play these first party games on Xbox one or move up to the series series. And even during some of the presentations that Microsoft has presented since then, that we've seen that that's not necessarily the case that some of these first party games are going to be series X only or series S only. Right. And then we're not sure about it because then like they cover it back and forth on. But anyway, on top of that, they were saying, Hey, we could, we just couldn't hit even 900 P on Xbox ones. That's why we're doing it. Oh, and by the way, the other rumor is that it's going to be delayed to 2022. Well, it's all BS. Uh, Microsoft came out there and said, no, these are fake rumors. We don't know who's spreading them. That's not what's going on. We are releasing on both consoles. It has not been delayed to 2022. And in fact, on top of all that, uh, Microsoft and 343 Industries have confirmed that Joseph Staten will be returning home to Halo for a bit. Now, this is a gentleman who was involved in some of the early Halos, the original Halos, and he has worked on other games since he is familiar with trying to, you know, meet deadlines, get things out, get things in a good polished state, which is what looks like really Halo Infinite needs at this point is that final polish. Right. And he's worked on the campaigns before as well, too. And that's going to be an important thing here. So he's come back in. He's going to try to help get them back on track 
uh, since they did push the original release date out of the Xbox console release window to 2021. But he's he's not replacing anyone. He's actually going to work with the existing people that are working there that he actually mentioned, you know, the, the wonderful people that have you know, done this so far uh, have demonstrated an amazing ability to deliver new comment uh, content. Sorry. Uh, it, so he's he's definitely not replacing. He's going to augment them try to make sure that they meet the deadlines that they said they're going to meet. And hopefully these rumors are just that baseless rumors. Well, I think you have something else that's not rumors. Uh, yeah. So not rumors. It... Uh-oh. So I'm guessing I'm still here. If uh, so, what we were going to cut into is basically the Xbox Game Pass is adding six new titles, uh, including brand new games that have also not been announced yet. So or just got announced. I'm sorry. So one of the games they did announce uh, was actually one we were talking about earlier, which is Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, that's been uh, one of the big games that just came out. Uh, and obviously, you got to have the pass to do this. Uh, you get the basic game. You don't get any of the extra stuff that they're they're offering out. Uh, but there's a couple other games as well. Uh, so Battletoads is also one of those games that was released. The uh, Microsoft Simulator, we have Spiritfire, which is also, we mentioned before, the Nintendo Switch. Uh, that's also now available now straight up on the Xbox uh, Game Pass as well. Uh, Darksiders Genesis, uh, that's another one. We have Crossing Souls, and then uh, Don't Starve Giant Edition, which is also just released. So uh, check those out if you're on the Xbox Game Pass. Those are the games you're going to be getting here soon. Uh, and then... Speaking of free games, uh, the other one that we have is actually uh, for PlayStation. PlayStation Plus we've covered in the past of which ones we're actually getting, uh, but they've announced this uh, week or this they announced this week basically for September uh, they're going to be having uh, basically two games. You're going to get Player Unknown, Battlegrounds, so PUBG if you're not familiar with that already, and you're also going to get Street Fighter Five. Uh, so if you want to check those out, that'll be starting September 1st. The thing to note, though, is that uh, these games, are, the games from August are still up. So if you want to get Fall Guys or you want to pick up the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the campaign uh, remastered, you can still get those till August 31st. Uh, these games won't go live until September 1st. So you'll have that time to pick those up. And uh, it's pretty exciting if you haven't got those yet. The next thing that we have is... Uh, another delay, this is actually confirmed delay, is uh, the Elder Scrolls series. So, the Elder Scrolls 6, as we all saw at the Bethesda announcement, uh, was it last year? Maybe the year? I think it's last year at this point, I don't know what days. Uh, but basically they announced the trailer, that was like the biggest thing from the Bethesda launch. It was like, you know, you see this field and it looks like you're kind of flying over it and there's a mountain. And then all of a sudden all you see is just Elder Scrolls. Uh, six, and that's all you see. You don't see anything else. They don't. They don't hint to anything else. Uh, but of course, everyone freaks out and is like, you know, cheering in the crowd and such. And uh, that's just what we had. So, uh, with that, they they actually announced uh, earlier this week uh, on Twitter. Uh, Pete Hines came out and confirmed that even more than two years later, uh, so it's been two years, the game is still very far away. Uh, when fans asked about the release information of Elder Scrolls, Hines only not uh, not only confirmed Bethesda has nothing to share, but it won't be having anything to share for a long time, uh, which is sad to hear. But I mean, ultimately, for a game at this size, obviously it's going to take time to 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 build, and obviously they're still making other things. So uh, this is actually a comic book article, but uh, the other game they were looking into was Starfield. They announced that was another game where it was like a very short trailer, nothing going on, and it was just like. Starfield, single player adventure, we hope. I mean, so they're basically building two games that are supposed to be like massive, like standalone games. Um, so of course, to hear to hear these things being delayed doesn't surprise me, especially like we said before with studios with the whole uh, COVID sense where like people aren't being able to work from the office and it's just, it's harder to, to work as projects and such. So uh, we'll see what happens. It's gonna be a while before we probably see either of these games, but you know, it's it's ten, it tends to happen. Do I have you? 
All right. So I actually pulled up another article this week that I just thought was interesting. Uh, it's one of those got my attention. And it literally is about a research group and and they were in the University of College London. This is an independent.co.uk article. Uh, they, they had a team behind the breakthrough and what they did was they were able to transmit data at 178 terabits per second. So that's the speed that is the capacity of any system. It's double the speed of any system currently used in the world and also a fifth faster than the previous record. The, the connection, so, so hear it out. The connection is so fast that they're able to down, they would be able to download the entire Netflix library in just one second. So think about that. Think of all of the stuff on Netflix. They can literally download it all in one second. So that got my attention. That was something super interesting. And uh, I mean, I wish I could get that at my house. Like I've got fiber, but that's just not fast enough. Like I would love to get 178 terabits a second. That'd be crazy. All right, moving on. Let's see. So also another announcement, uh, Switch has announced that they're going to have a new console coming out, a uh, new Switch console, not like a new another new item than like a Switch. Uh, they're saying the first quarter of 2021, there hasn't been any other things but rumors of like what type of hardware they're going to be using. Um, there's rumors that because of the new launches of the new consoles or wanting something a little bit more beefy, so maybe like something with 4K, maybe a little more processing speed. Uh, more a better a better chip to process the different things, but most likely, uh, you know, this is all still speculated. They're thinking it's going to be more of like a pro like uh, type switch, but even with that, we we don't know. All they have announced so far is that they're going to basically have uh, a new switch come first quarter of 2021. Very cool. Very very cool. A uh, couple of things that uh, I want to talk about, starting off with. Kotaku has started a new series, a video series. Uh, interestingly enough, a video series because it is actually called Be Behind the Voice. And Behind the Voice is specific about talking about those voice actors that are so frequently heard but not seen. And they started off with this wonderful voice actor called Sarah Elmele. And she is notable not only because that she's a voice actor, but also because that she's kind of worked within the industry to move ahead some of the interests of voice actors themselves. S specifically things like, well, uh, organization, making sure that they have uh, appropriate breaks, representation, things like that. And, you know, she talks about this a little bit. Uh, her family has done some organization in the past that some of the stuff that she comes from, she also, uh, she's worked on some of the stuff that we've probably seen and heard. She is one of the characters in the Metagular Solid, uh, excuse me, in the Gears of War series, the most recent Gears of War. Uh, she plays the character that comes in and, you know, drives the APC and, and tries to save them. And she, t during this uh, Kotaku video, she's talked about, oh, it was really great because the more that they trusted me as a voice actor though, you know, cause there's all the secrecy about leaks and, you know, we've talked about that. The more they trusted her, the more she knew about that character, the more she knew about the situation, the better she could react, the better she could act. The more she knew about what the other voice actor was saying and how they said that she said, well, that way I didn't have to act twice because if I don't know, how they're reacting. If I don't know what they sound like, I have to act and guess how yeah, like they're almost like it's delivering their line. Yeah. Yeah. How they're delivering their line. And then I have to react to that. So that was some of the things that she did. So yeah, she played Lizzie Carmine in gears five, um, Apollyon in after party, Katie and gone home. So she's oh. done a lot of these things. Uh, and just an amazing story that she tells. 
and she was very instrumental. And, you know, we, we talk about like kind of organizing people, you know, unions, what have you. And some people see that as negative and some people say it's positive. But one of the beautiful things that she did about this is she was able to get the actors union of which the voice actors are part of to like figure out how to do contracts for indie studios. Cause they were, they're always looking at triple a and you know, the big budget and all that stuff. And the indie studios couldn't like really come in to play on this because it was just way out of their league. So yeah. she was able to help organize some of that where, you know, the indie studios, they had specific contracts for them that, you know, more affordable or more reasonable kind of helps them out a little bit there. That's cool though. I mean, like you gotta have love for the independent gamers, like or the independent companies. Like it's, it's, it's sad that you're not sad. It's just it, when you start anything, you're starting small. And when you're going against these huge companies, right? Like these they have like many hundreds and hundreds of, you know, game developers. It's hard when you have that, you know, that the game voicing and games is, is a huge part of a lot of like, like, detailed story and like story oriented games and uh you know and if you don't have a voice actor to do that you're having to probably do it yourself and you know right. if you're a developer it doesn't mean that you're good at speaking on a voice to convey an emotion or anything so that's pretty cool that sounds that's pretty awesome absolutely so you told us about the playstation plus games correct yeah i told about the xbox games too excellent uh so yeah i mm. Flight Simulator is going to be the, the, the most interesting one that I've seen there. Uh, Spirit Fair is something that I suggest people look at. I've yeah. seen a couple of screens there. That was really awesome. Um, we, of course, stream. We stream on Twitch. Uh, we're looking at other options as well, playing around with some ideas. Yeah. Uh, we, of course, take our podcast and put it out. There is a audio podcast. We put it out. There's a video podcast. Boy, that'll be interesting this week. <laughs> and it's just interesting when we see some news that is directly relatable to us, especially in the area of streaming and streaming is there, there's a lot that you have to think about when it's involved with streaming and something that has come out within the last three to four years is advertisements and streaming. And yeah, sure. You got Twitch and YouTube and they put advertisements in between and that's great. But then you start getting people that get sponsored and this is Instagram as well. And there was a whole thing where, Oh, it's like, Oh, they're talking about this product. Is it because, you know, they're actually doing a review about it. Did they purchase it themselves? Did they get the product for free Yeah, from, that manufacturer. And that was a huge thing on Instagram. And it got to the point where the FTC, the federal trade commission had to get involved. And they literally said, if you are advertising something, if you're getting paid to promote this, you must, it's a requirement that you let people know. And for instance, even on Instagram, you had to use hashtag advertisement or hashtag ad in your promotion oh, otherwise wow. you could get fined like wow. big fines so it's absolutely amazing that we live in this environment like that and then you have this advertising agency that approaches companies and says hey we've got this new idea of how we can advertise you how we can get you out to those people the streamers and the people watching the streamers, tons of advertising. And Burger King said, yeah, sounds great. Because, you know, I mean, Burger King's going to jump on something where they get some advertising out there. Yeah, especially well, gamers are sitting there hungry, most likely, you know. Yeah. Late night. And <laughs> maybe Burger King knew what was going on. Maybe they didn't. But let me tell you, the advertising agency most likely knew the problems here. Because what they did was the advertising agency used a Twitch account and they actually named the Twitch account similar to what they're advertising at this time. Uh, they called it the King of Streaming. <laughs> so, yeah, a little bit of uh, on the nose there. 
king of streaming would go into popular Twitch streamers accounts or, or not accounts, but their streams and then make donations. And they targeted those streamers that had donations set up to automatically read out the donation if it was above a certain amount with it, like a text to speech program. So you could put whatever message you wanted to, as long as you donate and read it out. And this is, this is a common thing. Lots yeah. of streamers had this. So they would put in messages that are advertising deals at Burger King, like <laughs> $5 for this double Whopper. Seems like that's a really sick deal. And, and like, is so oh my goodness. cringy. You're like, obviously, this is a troll, right? Saying. This is a joke. Like, this is not a real account. But then you're like, wait. And <laughs> people thought that. People thought they were like, and like some of the streamers are like, Burger King. Like, Man, that's I hilarious. hate Burger King. When I was in Australia, that was just junk. And they would, and it, it, it's, it's funny in some ways where you like, they're doing this and they would like do another donation and do like, a reply comment to what the streamer said. So this isn't just like a bot. This is like live people doing some of this stuff. And the problem is, is that the streamers are getting paid. They're getting donations. Yeah. This is against not, not only do they have the problem here that they're getting paid and an advertisement is happening on their stream, which the FTC is all over right now. Right. So in this case, it's not the advertising company that's going to get fined. It's going to be the streamers. Oh my God. And it's going to be a hard, like they, they would have to like essentially take this to court and say, no, no, the, I did not want this to happen. This, so that's going to be difficult. And then on top of that, it's against the terms of service for Twitch and like Streamlabs, for instance, that you cannot use their services for certain types of advertisement. And, and they literally say junk email, uh, unwanted advertisement, which in a way kind of protects the streamers. Yeah. So that you can't do um, unsolicited and unwanted advertisement on someone else's stream. So that at least is in the benefit of the streamers where king of stream is who's going to be like permanently banned right? Uh, with these violations of the terms of service. So this was it was clever. It was what, super clever. It's clever. It's so clever. <laughs> <laughs> it's like and, the, the and, Twitter account for like Wendy's or something. Like now we've got Burger King trying to step up their game. I'm like, <laughs> that's hilarious. Right? Oh and man. It, in one way I, I I like the cleverness, but in the other way, it is so bad and so cringy and and so like they legit can get these people in trouble and get yeah. them fined. And it's just so gross at that point where it's just outweighs the cleverness. Yeah, that is, that is something that's interesting, man. Let's see where <laughs> that goes. Uh, kind of the last thing that I want to talk about is we talk about video games a lot. And at yeah. least today we did talk about some board games that are yeah. similar to Among Us. Well, that's good. It's that like was awesome. To spread it out a little bit. Because, I mean, we, we're definitely gamers first. And, I mean, not just video gamers. We're, we're tabletop gamers. We're, you know, RPG. I mean, it's anything is great. Like, I like to play games. Um, I will have to uh, post my shelfie on my Twitter so that you can retweet <laughs> it. Yeah. But I got tons and tons of board games sitting there gathering dust in the Roan economy. Hashtag Roan economy. I'll post mine too because uh, I have a I have a cabinet that we have all our games in. So I'll have to, we'll have to just post them out. Right. Uh, and with board games comes tabletop role playing games, which I am a fan of. You are Zycia. You are a fan of as well. Both of us love to play Dungeons and Dragons. Yep. And. They announced a new book, and the new book is very exciting. Uh, they had a previous book, Xanathar's Guide to Everything, mm -hmm. Xanathar being a beholder, and that introduced a lot of class options, a lot of things where you could really change up you know, your base classes. So they have a new one that's coming out, and it's based off of a lot of work that they've done in the Unearthed Arcana. Now, 
For okay. those that are not familiar with it, the whole concept of the Unearthed Arcana, Arcana is it's a portion of the website where they are able to show you what they're considering to put into the game. Changes to classes, new ideas, new options, changes to like anything within the game. And they, for instance, so we're talking about classes, they might give you the first five levels of a class to let you play test on and provide feedback. So that's where some of these books actually get their beginning content from. So Tasha's Cauldron of Everything is going to be coming out. It's the follow-up to Xanathar's Guide of Everything. Okay. And it is going to have whole new classes, uh, well, whole new subclasses. They, they're not messing with the, the basic archetypes. Okay. They uh, are providing new subclasses that people can specialize in. One very exciting part of this is they're bringing back psionics. And instead of a class of a psionicist, what they're doing is they're bringing back psionics as a subclass to the multiple main classes. Oh, wow. They're trying to make it so that regardless of whether you're a wizard or a fighter or a cleric, that you have the ability to kind of specialize in this mental portion of the game and be able to have a kind of a different spell casting ability as yeah. it were. So that's that's cool. going to be very exciting. Uh, another thing that is very topical is that they are going to be introducing in this something that they've been playing around recently. This is my understanding. I, I'm not hundred percent positive on this, but I'm pretty positive. They're going to give you the option to get away from the concept of race. Hmm. You don't necessarily have to be dwarven race or human race or TV. They're going to give the concept of changing more to ancestry and make race more pliable. Interesting. And yeah, they're, they're really trying to back off on that, which again is very topical and very understanding of how like, things are going on today. In the current world, yeah, exactly. In the current world, yeah. I could see that being so, interesting, like having your ancestry, like my ancestry was like tiefling, also half orc or something, like, and that's, you know, and that's how you are this other sub race. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. We'll have to see how that one works out. Yeah. Well, and even not even sub race. It's just that you are a person and this is your ancestry and your ancestry has contributed to you in different ways. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting how they handle that with, uh, you know, kind of the math that's involved here with like yeah. ability changes and stuff right. like that. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited. I've got, uh, you know, an ongoing campaign right now. So I'm excited to see how we can, kind of retcon that in and incorporate that. Yeah, I've got two campaigns I'm running, another campaign that I'm uh, just a part of, so totally feel you on all of that. All right, well, that wraps up our shorts for today. Uh, this is the part where we cover our emails, but our inbox is still empty, so if you have an email you want to send us over, uh, it's uh, goa at sasgaming.com, so it's goa at sassgaming.com. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and it doesn't have to be about any particular topic tell us tell us about your mowing experiences in fact <laughs> yeah another thing so the people who are listening to the podcast uh if you watch it live uh, actually during our uh, ad segment we actually take the time to go over our comments and questions from the viewers that are watching the live stream so it kind of gives you a little extra uh, if you do watch the live stream you get to ask some questions that we don't really cover here on the actual podcast uh, so if you're on the podcast, you can always send us an email for those things as well. Uh, and we'll read those out loud on the podcast and talk about it and, you know, do all that fun stuff. So, uh, as always, this is, uh, so if you're listening to the podcast, obviously check us out on, like I said, Twitch, uh, we'll have the videos up on YouTube eventually within a few days. And then our podcast will be out, uh, you know, probably tomorrow or the next day, uh, to those platforms that you listen to. Um, so if you like what you heard, subscribe you know follow us whatever on twitch and uh until next time uh we'll see you later have a great day have a great week take care stay safe and see you next time mm -hmm.